day so it's a pretty chilly December day today and I'm on the allotment to do some polytunnel repairs because this is in need of a bit of TLC it does need a clean over the winter time as well but I won't be doing that today but what I will be doing is patching up some of the holes in the tunnel skin and also fumigating as well which is going to be quite fun and interesting to test out I do get a lot of questions about my polytunnel. It's one of the most frequently asked questions is where did you get your polytunnel from? So I bought it from a company called Feel Good UK, which doesn't sound like a gardening company, but they do sell polytunnels. And this is quite a few years old now. I think we erected it in 2015 or 16, I'll have to check. And it's great. You know, I love it because it's got a really solid door that swings open. Um, it's been very, very storm proof and it's got a little skirt that we've buried into the soil um, and also we staked the corner points of the tunnel so it doesn't blow away. It's a great tunnel but it's just getting very old and needs a bit of TLC and I probably will need to replace the cover at some point um, but for now I will be patching them up. So when we put the cover on the tunnel we used some heat what's it called it's like a uv tape and you put it across the metal beams and you can see i've got quite a few that run across the top of the tunnel there and what that does is you it protects the skin of the tunnel from wearing in the uv sun as it gets hot on those pipes in the middle of summer so we did put some of that on but now i've noticed i'm starting to get holes appear in the tunnel mostly across the top from um, sun damage essentially and the tunnel skin has done very well but yes, it's time to patch it up. So what I've done is I bought this, it's not solid tape, it's a special polytunnel tape. So it's gonna be extra strong, super sticky and water resistant. So um, I've not used it before, but it should only be a case of cutting a bit off and then sticking it onto the holes. So um, it's time to get patching up. Actually, but first, let me show you some of, uh, some of the holes and um, what it means inside of the tunnel. So it's still quite busy inside the tunnel for winter where I'm storing a lot of my plants now but can you see along there I can poke my finger through there <laughs> and yeah all along the top here there's some quite big holes appearing where it sits on the metal pipe and you can see that's the UV tape that I was talking about. Um, so yeah a lot of them are along the top here and some of them are along the sides. This was probably my own fault because I didn't put a little stopper on the end of that bamboo cane. And there's a little hole there. So why is it important to patch up the holes? Well, storm damage is one of the biggest concerns if you have a tear or a hole that's a lot more significant than these because if the wind gets inside it, it can blow around the tunnel and then rip the tunnel skin even more and potentially cause a lot of damage especially if you're in a really exposed area, which I'm not, I'm quite protected up here, um, especially with where my tunnel is positioned in the corner. But that's one of the big things you've got to watch out for. Um, but also for my growing, you know, if I'm growing tomatoes in here, one of the key things you want to prevent is tomato blight. And the main cause of that is moisture in the air or moisture on the leaves. So what's going to happen is the rain or the condensation is going to come through those holes and then drip onto the plants. And then that could cause uh, blight. It can also cause other sort of fungal infections on other plants and bacteria growth. And that's not what we want inside our tunnels. So yes, I need it to be as uh, water resistant as possible. So I'm gonna go patching them up now. It's unfortunate that most of them are right on the top of my tunnel. And although I don't have a lean-to step ladder, well, lean-to ladder, I do have a step ladder. So I'm hoping I can just lean it against where this bar is. So I'm not gonna cause any damage. And obviously be careful if you're holding scissors around your tunnel. But yeah, that's quite a, a bit of a hole there so just seal that up oh no why didn't i do the thing isn't it so annoying trying to find the end of the cell tape <laughs> i'm 
I'm gonna try not to get any air bubbles underneath and just slide it down in one one motion, get all them bubbles out. I'll just show you just how bad the damage is on the top. So that's what it looks like all along the top there. Five or six to do, not too bad. I've been meaning to do that for so long and I'm so glad it's finally finished. I'm not getting any cold drips on my face when I have to shelter from the rain in the tunnel anymore. And I remembered to do the little flap so I don't lose the end when I grab it the next time I need it. So that's the roof all patched up, but I've got one more thing to do on the tunnel today and that's to fumigate it, which uh, I'm quite excited by. So why would we fumigate our polytunnels? Well, Back in the past, we used to use a sulfur fumigator and I'm not sure if they're illegal now or banned or just, maybe they are still available, but either way, they are nasty chemicals and I don't want to deal with that on my organic allotment. But the reason that I want to fumigate my tunnel is because this year was a particularly bad year for pests such as thrips and spider mite. And I'm worried that because we've had such a warm autumn, if we have a mild winter, and particularly in this sort of protected environment, that if it doesn't get cold enough to kill all those bad bugs, then they might still be there next spring when I'm growing all my new crops and my wedding flowers. So I wanna make sure that that's pest free without going the chemical route at all. So what I'm gonna try using is this garlic smoke greenhouse fumigator now i apologize if you're seeing smoke already it's just from my neighbor's plot who's having a bonfire but this is a completely organic natural garlic smoke so it's going to smell pretty funky and um, it's basically a candle that we light and then it sets off loads of smoke so one of the other reasons why i was patching up all those holes is to make it nice and airtight so i'm just going to um, see if this works and um, how well it works, I guess. So I'm just sort of testing it out for you guys. Although the weather is set to get drastically colder by the end of the week. So I feel like even if this doesn't work, the cold temperatures are gonna kill them anyway, because I think it's gonna get to minus four on Friday night, which is very cold for the December. It's suddenly gone from incredibly mild to incredibly cold. Yeah, I'm just going to um, check first, actually, that all the poles are patched up and that the vent on the opposite side of my tunnel is closed before I light this thing. So yeah, I don't really show you down this side very much because it's usually just loads and loads of brambles and you can't always see. But on this side, I don't know if you can see, it's covered in algae. Um, there's a flap there which you can lift up and then there's a mesh underneath it. And that can vent the size if you need the extra ventilation. So that's down, which is great. And I don't really have any holes on this side, so that's good. Right, I'm gonna read the uh, instructions first, see what this says. Helps a plant's natural defense and stimulates growth. Natural ingredients, easy to use. I guess it means that, you know, it's a good defense system throughout the season if it kills bugs any time of the year. Let's read this. God, it stinks already. <laughs> this canner is best used in the late afternoon or early evening when the weather is calm and the temperature is over 16 degrees. Hmm, okay. I think it's about six. <laughs> Let's try it anyway. Several hours before treatment, water all plants so the leaves are wet. So the leaves are dry at the time of use. Never treat plants which are dry at the roots to start the treatment, close all windows and make the greenhouse as draft proof as possible. Place the canister on a heat proof surface on the floor in the center of the greenhouse and ensure your exit is not blocked. Light the fuse and immediately exit the greenhouse, closing the door behind you. 
leave it for two hours when re-entering open all the windows for a short while well let's give it a go shall we set this thing off boy does it stink <laughs> So you can see on my lemon tree here, we've got somebody trying to overwinter. That looks to me like a caterpillar. And it's all these overwintering bugs that I want to get rid of. There he is wiggling down there. Look, oh, gotcha. And all this webbing over here could be spider mite because I did have bit of a problem this year with spider mite it's just been such a dry year but yeah it's the thrips and the spider mite that I really want to get rid of because once you get them it's quite difficult to get rid um, let's get let's get it going oh. uh -huh. so it looks just like a candle so I'm gonna light that and then put it in the middle on the floor slap bang on the ground and see how much smoke it lets off so I've actually got here my fire rod, which is a very environmentally friendly way of starting a fire. There's no disposable um, element to it like plastic lighters, you know. Ooh. Oh wow. Okay. Get out of here. We shut the door. Okay, it's been about five minutes or so. I'm pretty certain that um, the candles stopped going off. Now, I'm not supposed to open the door for at least two hours, but ideally overnight. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna have a little peek, see what it looks like. Let's see how smoky it is in there. Whoa. <laughs> Yep, okay, that's that's pretty fumey. Well, I'm pretty pleased with the result already. Um, even if it doesn't kill the bugs, it was entertaining. <laughs> I really wasn't expecting it to be quite so thick inside there. I thought it might just let out a bit of smoke. Um, yeah, pretty impressed so far. So I will come back hopefully tomorrow or the next day and see what I can report back. Hey, so it's now the following day. It's been about 20 hours since I set off the garlic grenade. <laughs> so I'm just gonna have a little look in the tunnel, see what it looks like, how much smoke we've got left there, and maybe see if we've got any dead bugs around. I don't know what to expect in terms of the bugs. I'm still not quite sure if it's meant to be a preventative that wards off the bugs or one that actually kills them whilst they're in there. So let's just have a look, see what's going on. I'm guessing there's probably not going to be much smoke left. I imagine it's all dissipated in the air. Gosh, I can smell it. It still stinks. Wow, yeah, smells of garlic. Blimey, <laughs> so strong. Can't see any more smoke. Let's have a look at the actual candle. Yeah, you can see it's all burnt through. Really effective, though. Must have got pretty hot because the plastic started to bubble. Hmm, let's have a look at some bugs. Let's go back to my lemon, see if that other caterpillar is still in here. I mean I imagine he'd probably survive because he's pretty tucked up in there. Oh, hello. Can you see it? You know what? Oh my god, is that actually dead? Oh, his friend's alive, look, wriggling. But the last time, they wriggle really quickly to try and escape as soon as you touch them. You know what, maybe that... They definitely look pretty sluggish, don't they? <clears throat> okay, I'm trying to have a look around to see what other bugs, or dead bugs, I might be able to find. It's more the spider mite and the thrips that I was worried about, which are a bug that you can't really see very well. 
Um, but let me have a little close look at some of these. I also have some aphids on some seedlings, so I'm going to have a look at them now as well. These seedlings here are my honesty seedlings uh, that I potted up not long ago. And they did have quite a few aphids on them um, a few days ago. I'm not sure if they did yesterday, I didn't check them. But always look on the underside of the leaves and in the centre of the plant where all that fresh new growth is. Right down there, that's where they hide and overwinter. But I can't actually see any to tell if they're dead. Okay, so on the underside of this leaf there is one. Can you see just there? That's an aphid. I'm going to give it a nudge, see if it moves. Uh, very slowly. So he's still alive, but he's not in a hurry. And quite often they'll do that. They, they drop so that they don't get eaten. Again, I'll give this one a nudge. It's definitely not moving very quickly. Now, whether that's because of the garlic or the cold weather, I'm not sure, but there's definitely not many left in here like there were. So whether they've died and they're now on the surface of the compost, I'm not sure. Inconclusive. Oh, quick temperature check. It's currently nine degrees C in the tunnel, which is 48.9 Fahrenheit got down to just below freezing that's previous few nights though reset that there we go all right i've got in here an astertium that's a self-seeded plant that's growing in one of my pots and i left it in here for the reason that the aphids were enjoying it and i thought well i'd rather they enjoyed the nasturtium than my actual plants and i've just pulled off a leaf because i can see some aphids on here Let's try and get a good angle for you that's a fully grown adult there, look. Give him a nudge. It's definitely not very lively. What about this one? I feel like it's definitely weakened them, maybe. That one on my finger. I pulled off another nasturtium leaf and knocked one of the aphids that was actually more, more dead looking than slow. Um, as is that one. Is that dead? So maybe it's more likely to kill the younger ones than the adults that are a bit more stronger and resilient. So there you have it, that's the result so far. It might still be early days if it takes a while for these things to get into their systems. Um, some dead bugs in there, some of them not quite dead. I think from sort of early inspections it seems like if they're young and small then they're dead and if they're bigger and more mature then not as dead. Still a little bit inconclusive on the results on that, so take what you want from it, whether you would go for it or not. I think perhaps it's worth a try. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Thanks for joining my little garlic experiment. Have you ever used one of these garlic smokes for your greenhouse or poly tunnel? Do let me know in the comments below. I hope this has been helpful in some way. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching, as always. Take care, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye.